starts right now. Phone a friend and check those bills. Phone bills in Texas set to increase inflation. Not to blame for this one. We're going to break down what your bill could look like as early as next month. And new video of those ongoing military operations. Our cameras capturing Black Hawk helicopters appearing to land. What we heard and saw right outside the KSAT 12 studios just moments ago. Plus a scam alert that police say is leaving local victims distracted while their homes are being invaded. But first. And more parents preparing to send their students to school tomorrow, the same day we see a big rise in rain chances, but a lot of people are seeing rain as we speak. Will it impact the trip to the bus stop, recess, after school pickup? Let's bring in meteorologist Adam Kasky. Adam, something we've all been waiting for. A lot of people seeing great rain tonight, but time it out for us as we go through the next 24 hours. Well, we still have a few showers lingering this evening, which we'll get to in just a moment. But I want to start with tomorrow at the bus stop. By and large, dry. I don't even think you'll need the umbrella early in the day. 10% chance, just humid and cloudy early 76. Into the afternoon and early evening, our rain chances ramp up. I think even as early as about 2 p.m. tomorrow. We'll really dive into the future cast, and I'll show you the very latest high-resolution model in just a bit. First of all, a look at our live radar. What we have left over is all east and southeast of San Antonio at the moment, and it is fizzling out a little bit. This was some very good soaking heavy rainfall for southern Lavaca County, a good chunk of DeWitt County, now even Wilson and Carnes counties. When I say a good soaking rain, take a look at some of these radar estimates out there and even the rainfall rates. Obviously, the rain falling very hard within this, but you look at the actual rainfall, this yellow area. Yeah, that indicates over two inches of rain estimated just northeast of Quero. Uh, we're going to show you some of the rainfall locally here. And again, a look at that future cast. And even if you miss out tomorrow, more chances. We'll talk about that as well in a bit. All right, see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Adam. Well, new tonight, many of us sending our children back to school, worried about school safety, primarily safety for our youngest elementary children at the forefront as more districts are heading back to school in the days and weeks to come. In an effort to better protect them, the Comal County Sheriff tells the night team's Lee Waldman they actually started a new program. We wanted the kids that were going back to school to feel safe, and we wanted to reassure parents that their children would be safe there. Cutting out the insecurity and showing parents their children would be looked after in the event the worst should happen. That's what Comal County Sheriff Mark Reynolds is working towards with the launch of a new initiative. We're hoping to build the SROs back up with our reserve deputy program. Right now, there are school resource officers on middle and high school campuses. The reserve deputy program is focused specifically on elementary schools. It takes us 30, 45 days from getting somebody through the uh, testing and interview phase until we get them in a uniform with backgrounds and all that kind of stuff. The program has been active for a month and is drawing highly qualified candidates like Carl Heinz and Jonathan Wires. An Army veteran was sent to Operation Desert Storm back in 1991. And then I came back home and enjoyed my childhood dream of a career in the Illinois State Police. Houston Police Department at the age of 19 years old and spent my entire career there and I retired with 32 years of service. Both Wires and Heinz had a renewed sense of duty following the Robb Elementary tragedy. I'm a father of two and soon to be a grandfather okay. and it, it uh, folks shouldn't be scared to let their kids go to school. Each reserve deputy has to pass a physical on the rower, a task I tried and struggled with. Because they're already peace officers or honorably retired, the time to get them ready to be on campuses protecting kids is expedited. I'd like to I'd like to be a part of combating that evil in our world and making a difference. Hopefully it never comes to that. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. If you'd like to join the Comal County Reserve Deputy School Resource Officer Program, this is the number to call. Contact Lieutenant Mark Long at 830-620-3400, extension 2007. Bernie ISD also using school resource officers as their students began class today. Those officers are coming from the Bernie Police Department, Fair Oaks Police, the Kendall County Sheriff's Office. Those officers are not only meant to protect, but also build relationships. Over at Northeast ISD, a bond allowed them to beef up security on their campuses gradually over the years.
And in that bond, what we did was we added secured entry vestibules, some of our schools. Uh, we outfitted every single school with a, a video buzzing system. So that way anybody who's coming up to our schools to visit has to be um, recognized and buzzed in before they even get into the um, interior of our, our campuses. NEISD welcomed students back to class today. That district installing new fencing, also encouraging students, teachers, the community to speak up if they see something that they find concerning. See something, say something. And the emphasis on security, of course, follows the school shooting in Uvalde back in May. Nearly three months later, Governor Greg Abbott says the Department of Public Safety will be adding 33 officers to cover campuses within the Uvalde Consolidated Independent School District. Members of the community have called on the governor to begin a special session for gun reform. That hasn't happened. Many parents we've spoken to are also still asking for accountability after law enforcement failed to act quickly the day of the shooting at Robb Elementary. And the question about that response from DPS still remains unanswered tonight. A judge ruled DPS can keep records regarding that mass shooting in Uvalde a secret for now. It's in response to a lawsuit that State Senator Roland Gutierrez filed against the agency. The judge in the case says Gutierrez did not properly file his request under the Texas Public Information Act. Therefore, DPS did not have to fulfill it. Gutierrez says he disagrees, saying state police were looking for an excuse not to comply with his request. Did you hear that? That's the sound of what the military is calling a controlled explosion. New video continues to come into our newsroom on those military training exercises. This was just outside our KSAT studios within the hour. Today, another training held earlier in the day in daylight hours, though we've been told these trainings will most likely happen from 6 p.m. at night to 3 a.m. through Friday. Rudy Martinez shared what he saw near the Alamo Dome on Monday. You can see how close to the ground this helicopter was kicking up dust and debris. You can share your video too. just email it to news at ksat.com. A change in monkeypox procedure coming to San Antonio. Just this morning, Metro Health says they will be using a strategy to stretch the monkeypox vaccine. One vial can help vaccinate five people just by using a smaller dose and injecting it just under the skin instead of deep into the tissue. The virus can spread to anyone, but it can be especially dangerous for those with weakened immune systems. The night team's Patty Santos talks to one clinic who just went from being able to vaccinate 60 people to 300. Basically, by decreasing the volume that we need to give for a vaccine, it increases our doses by five times. That's huge. With the overnight change, 250 plus patients at the care clinic will be able to get the full monkeypox vaccine, according to Dr. Sharice Rohr Allegrini, taking the difficult decision off the clinic's plate. And it's difficult because we really had to prioritize who we can give them to. Earlier this month, Metro Health announced it would distribute 1,000 vaccines among six local aids and community-based organizations. Metro Health uh, has administered 42 doses, and these are primarily uh, to the close contacts, which is uh, the priority group one population. It's unclear how many doses are left in the community. The Kind Clinic, for example, already administered all available doses they were given to 60 people. We do have a waiting list and we continue to try and be ready the moment that there's more supply that we can be able to share. The change in dosing also means a change in how the vaccine is given to those over 18 years of age. It is now through the skin using a smaller needle. The CDC has videos on its website for those administering to review. So people who administered these vaccines intradermally need a special training if they are not comfortable doing intradermal injections. And here in Bear County, there are currently 16 confirmed cases of monkeypox. Metro Health says it's already put in a request for more vaccines. Right now, the priority are those with a weakened immune system as well as those who have had close contact with someone with the virus. Steve? Thank you, Patty. A garbage crew found the first gruesome clue in a murder case. Nearly two years later, this man, Rafael Castillo, is on trial. He's accused of using an axe to dismember a woman's body. Castillo was out on bond as this trial plays out. Investigators believe he killed Nicole Perry back in November of 2020. 
One public works employee told the jury what he found when he went to pick up trash bags on South WW White Road that day. When I ripped the bag open, I could see uh, it looked like a neck and then it had like a necklace. Another bag had bloody shoes with the name Nikki written on the sole. More witnesses expected in this case, but Castillo's legal team says they plan to call those witnesses credibility into question. It's still ahead. A walk with a dog ends with a call to Cibolo police. The encounter made this morning in the moment police made sure to capture on camera coming up and more money troubles for Texans with phone bills starting next month you're likely going to see a higher bill. We're going to break down the particular charge that's gone up more than 20% and why we're seeing this rate hike in the first place. It's next on the Night Beat. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but you will likely see an increase in your phone bill next month. The Public Utility Commission voted to increase one particular fee from 3.3% to 24%. We're talking about the Texas Universal Service fee. It applies to the voice portion of your bill, not data, not texting. Amy Davis breaks down how much it could end up costing you next month and how we ended up here in the first place. Notifications like this one sent to many T-Mobile customers was the first they had heard about a bill increase. 3.3 to 24 percent. The Texas Universal Service fee is collected to help keep rural phone bills affordable so that even people who live far away from the city can have access to phone service and emergency services through 911. Two years ago, when smaller rural telephone companies told the Public Utility Commission the fund was running low, the PUC took no action. The companies finally sued when they were out $200 million, money they used running lines and providing service to rural areas of the state. The phone companies won, and a judge ordered the PUC to fully fund the state's universal service fund. In order to catch up, the PUC passed this big increase. Here's what it means for an average bill. Take a look at Judy's consumer cellular bill. Her fee was 61 cents at 3.3%. At 24%, the fee would be $4.44. And this fee is applied to every line if you have multiple phone lines on one account. Joe Wheeler said T-Mobile told her her bill would only go up about $4 each phone. But she wrote, I have six devices, so my bill will go up $24. When we reached out to T-Mobile, a spokesperson sent a statement that reads in part, while this will not impact the overall monthly bill for the vast majority of T-Mobile and Sprint customers who are on plans with monthly taxes and fees included, customers on other plans may see a small increase. That was Amy Davis reporting. Now that fee change will show up on bills as early as next month. The PUC plans to lower the rate after about 12 months to cover the $2 million shortfall. Then they would set the rate to continue paying for that rural service fee in the future. All right, want to tell you about a scam alert. Victims in this case distracted with the promise of tree trimming work. Police in Alamo Heights say they have been getting reports of this scheme from nearby agencies and they are sharing an alert with their neighbors. Police say a man knocks on an elderly resident's door. They mostly target the elderly. Ask them to meet them in the backyard to discuss tree trimming services. Only then two other suspects walk in through the unlocked front door and burglarize the elderly person's home while the victim is distracted. Police say the suspect in this case is from New York. They know that much and they know he drives a white SUV. All right, take a look at what Cibolo police wrangled this morning. You see it? A snake believed to be between 12 to 50, 10 to 12 feet long, rather. Joseph Villarreal told us he took his dog out for a morning walk when this guy just slithered by. He called Cibolo police. They were able to use a recycling bin to get a hold of the snake. This was by Kitty Hawk and Pilot Point. Look how long this guy is. Police actually posed with the python. They say the reptile will be turned over to Texas game wardens. That's something that I think Adam Kasky probably took note of. <laughs> a python. Oh, I mean, yeah. you have rattlesnakes in your neighborhood. No, no pythons, I'm guessing. Yeah, I've taken care. I took care of one of those rattlesnakes. Still have the rattles to prove it. Yeah, yeah. You but, didn't uh, turn it over. You didn't no, turn it over to anybody. I didn't. No, didn't turn that one over. Yeah. Uh, too close to the bus stop for the kids. I want to go over the weather headlines. More rain chances tomorrow, and I think we'll have better coverage than what we had today. And if you miss out tomorrow. 
More opportunities Friday and Saturday and even a sliver of hope into Sunday. So this is a nice welcome shift in our weather pattern with a little upper level disturbance that's slowly going to be moving overhead. Also today, moving up in the 100 degree rankings. I'll share that with you in just a moment. However, we will be just under 100 for a stretch of time with our elevated rain chances and extra cloud cover. So let's go to the radar. Take a look at this. Wherever you see the green, blue, yellow on this map, that indicates where we actually had some rain today. Around San Antonio, not a whole lot, but we zoom in quickly to the far northeast side of town, 1604, and basically just east of Bulverde Road, over half an inch near Madison High School, just about an inch of rain there near Nacogdoches Road. And you look on the far southeast side of town, we're talking near Calaveras Lake, anywhere from a half to eight tenths of an inch of rain. But this was highly localized this evening and tonight. Most of it was farther east of town, drought stricken parts of the coastal plain. I mean, Carnes County, look at this, just outside of Wilson County, southeast of Stockdale, 2.1 inches. I got a report from Smiley of a half an inch already in the rain gauge. That's nice to see. And just northeast of Cuero, about 2.7 inches. Those are radar estimates. But you look, we still have some ongoing rainfall. This is over the past hour, and this was even more electrified and even a little more organized a couple of hours ago, especially from about 745 to 815. Moving south of Hallettsville, this is slowly falling apart as it moves southward. But moving into Carn City from Helena, Panama Maria into Carn City, looks like you'll actually tap into some of this moisture. So a nice quick splash and dash downpour there. Let's get right to our future cast. We're going to fast forward to tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, pretty quiet, mostly cloudy, humid. By the early afternoon, we're talking 2, 3 p.m., I expect some thunderstorms to start developing. Not everywhere, but here or there, hit and miss. And then they'll come and go randomly as we go through the afternoon and early evening. Notice 4 o'clock, some spots on the map here. Don't pay such close attention to the exact location here on the Futurecast. Just the mere fact that it's also on board thinking, hey, the ingredients are here. We should develop some widely separated downpours. Again, not everybody's going to see them. I know we always have to say that, but those that do could get a swift inch of rain out of it, maybe even a little bit more. All right, let's talk temperatures. Today, 101 for the high temperature. Keep in mind the average is 97, but we're four degrees shy of the record today. 57th 100 degree day so far this year. Now we're tied for second place. First place is 59, and I do think we could even tie or exceed that as we get into next week. Uh, right now, 80 Kerrville in Fredericksburg. Meanwhile, 90 in Pleasanton, 85 officially in town. You get to Bernie 79, Castroville at 90. Some pockets of rain cooled air still out there. Tomorrow morning, 76 at 7 a.m., just a 10% chance then. By 10 a.m., we're already in the lower 80s, 20% chance of showers. By 1 o'clock, we boosted up to 40%, and it's going to stay there, 40% chance of those showers and non-severe storms all the way through sunset, just below 100. Castroville 98, Seguin 96, and the same goes for Friday and Saturday. So we're looking at more opportunities if you miss out tomorrow. Bring on the rain. Thank you, Adam. All right, we know he will likely miss some games for the regular season. That does not matter, though, Greg, when it comes to preseason. No, you're talking about Deshaun Watson, who was suspended at the time for six games, possibly more depending on it if the NFL wins their appeal. But when we come back, he will play in the preseason and will, in fact, start for the Browns on Friday. We have that breaking news, plus a fighting Texas Aggies packed to being a starter coming up. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Former Houston, Texas star Deshaun Watson expected to start at quarterback for the Cleveland Browns this Friday when they face the Jaguars in their preseason opener. That announcement was made by the team just before boarding their charter flight to Jacksonville today. That's with at least a six game suspension without pay hanging over his head following a ruling by disciplinary officer Sue L. Robinson following as many as 25 civil lawsuits filed against the quarterback for his behavior during massages. But the NFL has decided to appeal that decision seeking a one year suspension without pay. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell explained why after Robinson's ruling. Because we've seen the evidence, she was very clear about the evidence. Uh, she reinforced the evidence uh, that there was uh, multiple violations here and they were egregious and it was predatory behavior. That's, those are things that we felt um, 
we always felt were really important for us to address in a way that's responsible. All right. As a result of the appeal, Goodell has appointed former New Jersey Attorney General Peter C. Harvey to hear the appeal, even though Goodell cannot give us a timeline as to when that ruling would be made. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys in Denver tonight after breaking camp in Oxnard, California this afternoon, ending just over two weeks of workouts in California before flying to Denver. Well, they'll participate in a shared workout tomorrow against the Broncos before facing Denver in their preseason opener on Saturday night. Dorrance Armstrong is about to start his fifth season with the Dallas Cowboys after he was drafted in the fourth round back in 2018. And he's coming off his best season yet, wearing the star. He started in five of the 13 games he played in last year, where he scored five sacks, 12 quarterback hits, 37 and combined tackles with three for a loss, but one stat that needs to improve on his forced fumbles, where he has had two in his career with the Cowboys and none last year. That is a point of emphasis this year by defensive coordinator Dan Quinn, asking the entire defense to make that a priority. It's just the attention to detail and, on, and knowing the right position and when to take the shot on the ball. That's something that you got to actually be able to key in when you get in front of the ball and, and find the loose spots to punch it out. So that's just something that we all want in goals because we didn't see like like we saw Law do it a lot of times. And it, when you go back and watch the highlights and replays, it's impressive to just be able to take the ball off somebody like that. So that's something that I want to be able to put in my game personally, and I think everybody else wants it too. All right, watch for that kickoff on Saturday night, except for 8 p.m. San Antonio time. When the Texas Aggies kicked off their 2022 season in just over three weeks from now, one of the featured players will be Devon A. Ching. Now, he's coming off a season where he had 130 carries for 910 yards, nine touchdowns, and an additional 24 receptions, 261 yards, and another TD. Head coach Jimbo Fisher wants to make A-Chain more of a dual threat on offense, trying to increase his receptions as well as his ball carries. It reminds A-Chain of his high school career not that long ago. He's able to compare it to his college career, where he's now the bona fide starter in the backfield for 2022. When I started high school, I was a second string running back, and then until like my junior year, I became a starter. We just like same here. I was a six year running back freshman sophomore year, and now I'm starting my junior year. So it just basically just you know just taking on that role, and you know just being a leader for the team. So it just helped helped me a lot, you know, that I also am familiar with like the position and phrase that I've been in. So it's basically like the same from high school. All right, the Aggies will kick out their season on Saturday, September the 3rd against Sam Houston at 11 a.m. at Kyle Field. One of the teams involved in the KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022, presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers, next. The Brennan Bears will be very much a part of our KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022, presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. When we feature three big high school games in the Alamo Dome on August the 27th. In fact, the Bears will be part of our primetime nighttime lineup when they face the Steel Knights in the final game of the triple header. Starting at 7.30, the Bears are coming off a great season. Which they finished 13-1 and one, and like Steel, ran the table through the regular season. Now, according to Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine, they're ranked 12th in the state in their top 50 of Class 6A. Now it's about kicking off their season with a tough opponent opponent in a playoff environment. A lot of us are excited to play, you know, coming up with two big games in the first, uh, first two games of the season. It's really exciting. Um, it's it's going to be a challenge. And so, you know, I know we're all excited. Very different experience for us. We've, we, have, we haven't been in the Dome. Uh, and it's just a very different experience for the entire team. I don't think anyone here has been to the Dome yet. Anytime you're playing a great opponent like Steel, you get excited. Then you're in the Dome. That's exciting. And then you're in the first ever Pigskin Classic. So that's like three checks for excitement. Yeah. KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022 presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Kicks off with our pregame show at 11 a.m. on August the 27th. It runs all day long until the night beat from the Alamo Dome. We just found out today we're going to be part of the Peanut Butter Classic as well. So you bring a jar of peanut butter to the game with you. We donate that to help feed the children children, hungry children of our area. Yeah, don't skimp on the skippy. skippy. That's what I think. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that. Too. Bring two jars. Yeah, bring two <laughs> jars. We'll be right back. Tomorrow afternoons when we're expecting some widely separated downpours and non-severe storms to develop. Not everybody's going to get them, but those who do could get a quick one to two inches. With this shift in our weather pattern, 90s tomorrow. We're talking 93 Helotus, 96 Converse, Poteet 98. Similar rain chances, 40% Friday and Saturday. I'm putting off washing my car for the next few days. No, wash it. It's good luck for us. Wash it, please. Okay, I'm going to wash my car.